Hello, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to another edition of Dave's Diary, where at Good Life Church, we're looking to give you uh, the information, the skills, and all of the help, the support that is going to help people uh, not just survive, but thrive during every season. And currently, we are in the middle of some uh, coronavirus lockdown, and uh, I'm about to be joined by a guest for today. And um, look, um, this guy's pretty clever. Look, I've got some clever people around me. And uh, Resurgent Church, all the way from Canada, has joined us. Is that the Hoysers? I love the Hoysers. Uh, but they're not, I'm not doing the interview of the Hoysers today. So um, what I'm looking for, look at this. I've got a friend request coming through, request to be joined. I'm now, with, the, uh, with our guest for today, we have a couple of, uh, it is, love the Hoysers. Andrew or Vanessa, or is it both? Oh, look at that. It's James hey, McPherson. Up? Hey, James McPherson, we've just been joined by, um, I'm not quite sure whether it's Andrew or Vanessa Hoys, all the way from, uh, from Canada. Do you have any words of wisdom for the Hoysers? I love the Hoysers. I've not... Uh, caught up with the Hoysers for a long time, but I trust that both Andrew and Vanessa and the family are doing really well in Canada, and I'm sure they're making a big difference there. Look, not only are they making a big difference, they're probably the best-looking pastors in all of Canada. Well, there's probably some pretty good-looking pastors in Canada, but they've got to be up there at least. Hey, they've got a very good-looking Prime Minister in Canada. <laughs> Which is what really counts. It's just, <laughs> sorry, the comment has just come through. It's just Vanessa actually watching right now in regards to uh, in the name of Resurgent Church, but her husband is in the hot tub right now. The less said, the better. Don't know if that's the uh, don't know if that's the picture that we're all after right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us today, James. How's the uh, how's the family? How's Veronica and the kids? Yeah, everybody's well. A little stir crazy being locked inside. But um, it's actually Joe and Ben's birthday today. Oh, wow. But unfortunately, they can't really do anything. So um, it's just one of those crazy times, right? Right. And so what is, what is the plan? How do you do birthday party? How old are the boys now? They turned 15 today. Right. So yeah. now they are doing online learning for school because yes, school man. is in. And uh, then um, uh, we will have dinner tonight at home. Um, but no friends or anything like that because all of that is banned. So it's a very quiet 15th birthday. It is a very quiet 15th birthday. My uh, Joshy attended his friend's 15th birthday. They basically just played Fortnite together. That's all they did. So it's all on, online gaming. They all had their own uh, little muffin cupcake in front of each other and sang happy birthday to the birthday boy. But uh, not quite the same, but they're trying to make it work no matter what. Look, imagine if this lockdown had happened, you know, 20 years ago, what would we have done? No internet. Um, mm. We would have been used to reading books, which no one does anymore, actually talking. Sorry, terrible. reading what? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> would have been terrible. You'd have to actually talk to the humans that you live with. I know. I know. Wow. Well, wow. Um, so uh, I'm assuming your work has changed. Are you working from home? Yeah, yeah. So my role with Alpha Crucis um, College is uh, all remote at the moment. So not going into the office, but um, doing meetings remotely. And of course, all our courses are now online as well. In fact, enrolments are up significantly um, because so many people now with time on their hands are looking for something to do. And uh, what better time to um, upgrade your skill level or uh, do some further education than now. So it's actually quite busy, but being able to work from home is a great advantage. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, um, you uh, look, you've just been recently uh, remarried um, in the last 12 months. How many months was that? It's less than 12 months now, isn't it? No, six months ago. Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. how, is, how is that traveling? How is it? Tell us, tell us quickly. How's the, how's the blended family going yeah. right there? Great, of course. Um, not without challenges, of course, but um, right. yeah, very blessed, very blessed. Fantastic. Well, cheering you on. Looks like fun. We love, we love watching on uh, social media, seeing the kids having fun. Um, look, here we are in the middle of a uh, coronavirus um, lockdowns and things have had to change a lot um, in regards to the way that church is delivered. Um, 
obviously you're not pastoring your church now, but you're still involved a lot with church and helping a lot of churches and are very experienced in that. I want to go down the line of um, if you were, uh, if you were still pastoring right now, how would you tackle this situation? Well, it's a situation that no one's been in before. So there's a lot of trial and error at the moment, which is perfectly understandable <clears throat> because, like I said, none of us have done this before. Um, fortunately, many churches uh, doing multi uh, were already set up for uh, online delivery of um, teaching and preaching. Um, so I, I think it's a great opportunity to reach a wider group of people. I think it's also a great opportunity to uh, hone your online presence because eventually life will go back to some sort of normal and Sunday services will resume. But as a church, we should be much better at online uh, delivery in the future than we are now because I, I think people watching online, now people are getting used to it. I think pastors yeah. will understand Many people will watch online and there won't be quite the concern that people are watching online and not in the building. I'm not saying being present physically in church is not the ultimate, but I do think that uh, this will change the way that we do church and think about church. Online will be far more prevalent and I think pastors will be far more relaxed about it and give more attention to it. I think the development of online campuses uh, is something that, a few churches have been doing, but more churches will take that seriously now that um, online is not just out there in the ether somewhere and it's interesting, but we'll actually give attention to how do we pastor people online? Um, how can we look after people who may never physically uh, be in our building, yet we will regard them as genuinely part of our church community and start to treat them that way. I think that's a big shift that's going to come. Okay. Um, there were, look, I was writing madly at that point. I want to dig into a lot of those points. Um, multi-sites were already kind of equipped, ready to go for the online delivery of preaching and teaching. Um, talking to that, because that has been, that has been progressive the last decade or two in, in Australia at least, but around the world also. Um, so that, that advantage of being multi-site, um, you want to talk into that? Well, I think multi-site churches have um, typically been using um, some sort of online delivery of services uh, so they've just been set up well for it. I think the style of preaching is quite interesting when you're preaching online uh, because preachers are now uh, effectively doing television. So you're broadcasting. So you're uh, looking straight down at now, that was already a challenge when you had an audience in front of you to remember that you've got an online audience as well. And so when you're looking at the congregation in front of you, uh, those watching online are watching you preach to other people. But when you're looking straight down the camera, then you're speaking directly to the people online. Of course, now we're recording services with uh, no congregation present. So uh, you are speaking directly to the camera. So that style of preaching has changed. Um, I think that um, remembering to include people watching online rather than uh, perhaps welcoming them at the start of the service and then forgetting all about them, which is typically the way many preachers have done online communication, that's now changing and preachers will learn how to communicate to an um, audience that is um, elsewhere than right in front of them. So I, I think preachers will get better at this. And when we return to Sunday services, as I said, uh, preachers will be much better at preaching not only to the congregation in front of them, but also uh, through the camera to those watching in, in various locations online. Fantastic. Um, look, you were just talking about the preaching style. I know... Um, we were just dabbling into our um, our online presence and our video um, preaching. We've got five five campuses and we were just heading that way. Um, and all of a sudden, we're not just heading that way. We have jumped, um, which a lot of people have. And so you're trying to work with a team and equipment and all that kind of fun stuff. But I certainly have found the difference in communicating, uh, having an online delivery of my message um, through... Uh, talking straight down a camera and not having people to bounce off. 
has been quite the challenge. Um, and then also, I, I think that's right. Me trying to remember, how do I speak to the, I was thinking, how do I speak to that person in that room, um, in that lounge room? Whereas previously, when I was doing messages, maybe for our, we would do them for our teams uh, at, when we had different, um, maybe leadership team um, uh, nights, I'd be able to talk to that campus and that campus full of people that were meeting in that place. But I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not, I'm not even going to Foster Tankari or to Auckland. I'm going to someone's home or someone's iPad or maybe it's a family watching the service on a Sunday. That's been quite the challenge to get my head around. And then to not, not have any feedback from people has been yeah. quite remarkable. And I've, I've watched myself trying to learn, trying to grapple with this. It's been quite the challenge. Um, that's going to hone an online presence. Anything else that would help hone an online presence? It's funny when you talk about communicating without people directly in front of you. It's very difficult to be funny. You can make a joke, but there's no response. None. Which is what happens when I make a joke with people present anyway. Um, and then... Uh, in all of my experience with you, James, that's correct. I think you tend to preach shorter as well because, as you said, there's, there's not a, a congregation to bounce off. And right. so you tend not to ad lib. Um, now, preaching shorter is not necessarily a bad thing because people are watching in their lounge rooms while they're making a cup of coffee, while the kids are running around. So I think people are far more distracted. Attention is a far um, more valuable commodity. And so I think preaching online will typically be shorter than if you had people present in the building. Um, that might not be a bad thing. No, I can't see that being a bad thing at all. Um, okay. So you posted some, uh, some things on social media, which you are want to do. Um, and you were talking in regards to last week about you're going to find out very quickly if churches have been building disciples or building people dependent upon a certain service. Um, can you talk more into that one for us? Well, I think that we are really good at running services. We run great services. Um, we have fantastic lights. We have fantastic production values. Um, we, we have really honed great services. And so we should. It's a crime to bore people in the name of Jesus. Right. Um, we, we should present the gospel excellently. Um, it's, it's not just the greatest story that's ever been told. It should be the greatest story that's being told. We should tell it well. Um, how dare uh, Disney or Hollywood uh, present stories better than we present the greatest story upon which every other story is built. So, so I'm not knocking excellence in Sunday services, but uh, I think this is the time when we find out, have we just been running Sunday services and now that Sunday services are no more, people disperse, or have we actually built a church? Because uh, you, you have a service on a Sunday, but you build the church through the week as right. you develop leaders, as you develop community, as you build structures, as you disciple people. And so I think that's one of the things we'll learn, or what every pastor will learn right now. Have I just been holding Sunday services? Or have I actually built a church that will endure through this season? Okay, so a church that endures, obviously the church is not the building, it's the people, so we're going there. Um, and as Darren Kiddo has just weighed in, it's not event-based, it's discipleship-based. Um, so what can you see? A, a church that's built disciples, now what does that look like? Obviously we gather for an online service on a Sunday, that kind of experience, but what, what do you see a church that's built disciples actually actively looking like in the community? Well, there's a lot of ways to... Um, answer that probably for 2,000 years the church has been taught about what do disciples look like um, so I'm not sure I can give you the definitive answer but I would say this that um, if if we've built a church we've we've connected people to Jesus uh, not simply to um, life coaching um, if we've built a church we have taught people to be able to access the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves rather than made them codependent upon ourselves. Um, if we've built a church, then we have raised up leaders who are caring for people, even as we are caring for those leaders. So I think if the church has been discipling people well, all of those factors will be present. Um, if we've built a church rather than simply held events or services, we, we should have taught people how to endure in difficult times. And as 
uh, Peter says, Christians ought not be surprised when difficult things happen. My fear is that um, some churchgoers may well be surprised because they've never been prepared for the fact that we are called to endure and sometimes we do suffer and sometimes there are difficult seasons. And for some Christians who have simply been attending um, impressive services, it might be quite a shock to them that now suddenly they're having to endure some tough times. But if we've built disciples of Jesus, we've taught them all of life and how to endure through all seasons. So those are some of the things that I think will be reckonings for us right now. And and by God's grace, um, most of us will uh, be able to say, you know what, I think we've built well. Okay. Um, Okay. So eventually we end up joining back in with some form of public service. Um, So how can you see the way that we go about things being different from that point? I, I'm confident that when we come back to public services, um, our services will be um, uh, better attended than ever before, um, partly because people are thirsting for community right now. Um, right. So I, I expect people will flock back to church. I also think uh, many people will be seeking the Lord because it's amazing how uh, when times are prosperous, people don't need God. But when you remove all of the... Um, the props uh, that um, sort of answer existential questions and suddenly people start to ask the bigger questions and I expect that will draw people back to church. Um, so I, I think that when we are able to meet again um, as a congregation, I, I expect the church will come back stronger than ever. Okay. Um, I love it in Proverbs where it talks about give me neither... Uh, poverty nor riches, um, and and the attitude is that when when I'm, when I'm impoverished, I'm like, well, God, where have you been? And if I'm in riches, well, why do I need God? And I, I think a, a a sway away from the fact that we've got everything so comfortable means that there will be a lot of people asking a lot of questions about God. The other thing I'm really finding right now is that when our services have gone from being um, something that you would go to, that you would get out of bed or leave your daily um, activities and, and head, head to a service in a certain location, um, that um, there, there's not so much of a, a novelty in that. There was something that would, people would, would do as a religious experience, or that was how it was seen. But now, an online presence, hey, come to my church online. I have seen more people invite their friends to attend an online service than ever before. Um, and I think matched with the fact that there's a lot of people looking more than ever because the things we were standing on, things we were relying on aren't around and a need for community. Um, I'm, I'm actually watching right now and I've been really, really proud of the good life is because there's been more invitations, more people wanting to look out for another, more people wanting to take um, care hampers to people. Um, and, and, and for me, I look and I go, it, it looks to me like we've done a, a fairly good job of building disciples that know I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm going to fish for men, those those two things. Um, have you seen an influx of outreach? Have you seen, obviously, more people looking, more people asking questions? What have you seen? When you're standing at the shops um, a suitable distance from the shopkeeper, um, people are talking about big issues now. Uh, right. It's you know, the conversation has changed from who should be allowed to use which bathroom to is this the end of the world? And uh, I think that's a really healthy thing. People sub- Western civilization had become very decadent. When, right. when you've got enough spare time that you can fight over who uses what bathroom, um, your culture is in decline. But when right. that's the issue, you, you're on the downhill slope of uh, culture. So I, I think that one of the benefits of what's happening not that we're glad any of this is happening, but one of the takeaways is that it's caused people to confront real issues again, um, like family, like what happens when you die, uh, like how are we supposed to live? Um, that's not a bad thing that we're asking those questions again, and certainly I think people are far more open to discussing those things. That The other thing that this has done is... is we, we've become a very proud culture because we can control everything. We, we even believe we can control the climate of the earth. That's, that's how arrogant we have become, that we think by setting government policies, 
We, I mean, it's one thing to air condition your lounge room. We believe we can control the climate of the entire planet. We have gone from absolute certainty that we are masters of everything to all of a sudden we haven't got a clue what is going on, let alone how we should respond to it. And that's right. everyone from our, our political leaders right through society. And, and so suddenly perhaps there's a humility coming that has not been present for a long time to say, you know what, uh, we, we don't know everything and, and we do need to start to seek and look beyond ourselves for answers. Now, those are two very powerful things. Asking the big questions and asking the big questions with a spirit of humility creates a great opportunity to share the gospel and to begin to talk about some of those things that otherwise people might not have been open to discussing. Yes. Um, on that whole thought of that we thought we were able to uh, control the, uh, the environment, control the, uh, not just air condition, the room, I was talking with my 11-year-old Joel, who uh, is uh, quite, quite the comedian, and he said the other day, he said, um, those poor straws, um, they're out in the ocean just going for a swim, just trying to relax, and then the turtles come along and then they eat the straws, and then those poor straws were just minding their own business, relaxing. He said, I reckon save the straws, kill the turtles. I think you ought to look at what school you're sending your children to. Clearly, there's an issue here. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if it's the schooling or the parenting, but something is amiss, no doubt. Um, look, I, I think that whole thought of more people looking for answers is going to come when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. I think we're in a situation like that and uh, more people searching and more Christians actually actively looking to shine. Um, through invitations and through conversations and through the fact that people really are looking for um, for big answers to big um, to big questions right now. Um, in regards to, I want to dig into the last two things I want to dig into is um, I want to get to family, uh, but I want to go via the uh, the first question of leadership development and discipleship in a church um, that has had to change. Face to face meetings have had to change how can we as a church or those that are disciples wanting to build team and, and uh, continue to bring answers to the world? How can we continue to make sure that we're developing people um, in a, in a, in a new, in a new manner as long as this season lasts? I'm not sure that a new manner is needed. I think just the medium is new. Um, so for most churches, they're training, um, pipelines have continued, but they're now online. Uh, thank God for Skype or Zoom. Uh, so um, at Hillsong, for instance, Night College um, continues, but rather than meeting on site, uh, people are in their um, living rooms and it's, it's done over Zoom. So um, church leadership meetings, um, church discipleship continues, uh, but instead of sitting in a coffee shop, you're doing what we're doing now. So I'm not sure that there's a massive rewrite in the way we disciple people. The principles of discipleship don't change. Just um, the medium by which we're communicating has changed uh, to an online platform. Okay. So that's, um, that's perfect. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm seeing. I just thought, you know, you're so clever. Maybe you'll have some extra help for us along the journey there. But, um, mate, that's all the things that I was thinking of anyway. So we're fine with that one. Um, Nothing new. Yeah, nothing new under the sun. Just Zoom, just Zoom meetings. Let's see each other across the screen. Uh, so, in regards to in regards to family, um, you're in a situation where the kids are being educated at school. You're working from um, home. I'm assuming Sharonica is doing the same. Um, more pressures, different pressures. Let's just call it different pressures in and around home. How would you suggest people juggle those pressures? Gee, I would suggest people figure that out and then contact me and give me some advice. Um, <laughs> look, I, it, it certainly is different pressures, but different opportunities as well. Um, I think it's not a bad thing for parents to be more involved in the education of their children. Um, certainly, it's been enlightening for me to uh, realise how little I know um, as I look at my kids' schoolwork. Um, um, but it's a chance for parents to be more engaged in their kids' schooling, which is a good thing. Um, it's also a great chance for families to spend more time together. So, uh, 
and there's pressures, of course, because you're all stuck under the same roof and, and there's no uh, opportunity to get out and go about your normal things that would replenish your soul. So um, I think just trying to find new ways to mix things up and to keep things fresh. Um, what are we? We're probably two weeks into this in Australia. So it's probably okay at the moment, but um, school holidays are about to begin, which means the kids are not doing schoolwork. They're freelancing, but stuck indoors. So um, give another two weeks and be a bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've um, our kids have just started um, school holidays one week early. They were um, being educated by Zoom calls. We're very happy for their uh, their school has done a great job of keeping them engaged, and I'm very happy that my youngest is 11. I couldn't imagine doing this with a lot younger kids. I'm also so glad that we've um, instilled a range of disciplines. Um, early in life and are not facing it now, but um, we just um, we just tried to work out what's our daily routine. What 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 do we find that's going to help us? And having three uh, strapping young men, um, part of the deal is let's get out and have some activity. Um, regulating reading time before screen time. Certain chores have to be done um, just because life just have, has to happen without the place turning into a pigsty. So. We are heading down that line. You have a friend here, Andy. Uh, Andy, I can't spell his. I don't know his surname. He's asking about North Melbourne. Is this is this North I, Melbourne? I'm assuming. I just saw that comment, and can I say, I never, I never would have dreamed in my wildest dreams that at this stage of the year North Melbourne would be undefeated. Uh, but we are undefeated going into April. So praise God, it's been our best AFL season ever. So, um, how many games of the? How many rounds of the AFL? happened this year so far yeah just one just one and uh so north north one who did they play we we defeated st kilda right big contenders those guys no not really okay <laughs> but who cares we're undefeated look and that's really really good we so appreciate that you are seeing the uh, the silver lining when you support North Melbourne, you have to you have to look for every silver lining you can find, no matter how small. Look, I go for man. I go for Manly in the NRL. I'm not a big um, AFL follower, but when it comes to Manly, I will take any silver lining I can find. Um, and the fact that we had we're one from two and uh, we're about halfway up the table is um, I'm, I'm going to take that as a win. It's a positive right there. But this is the worst thing. Like we're all cooped up at home, which I got to be honest. I'm thinking I can just watch sport. No, you can't. This is That's exactly right. <laughs> and there is no sport. I, I would watch. I would watch synchronized swimming at the moment. To be honest, if it was on, yeah. I would. I would watch equestrian events. There's nothing. There's nothing, absolutely anything. Um, there, there is a, do you know, have you heard of the story that um, Tangaluma Resort is looking to house all of the NRL and uh, well, play? Put, put every NRL player on an island. What could go wrong? <laughs> um, let's just make sure the press is not on that island. That would be absolutely um, terrible. Oh, my gosh. Watch out. Yeah, anyway, no locals around. No one. No cameras, please. Um, but then playing games out of Redcliffe and Suncorp and out of uh, out of the Gold Coast and keeping the quarantine going, I'm like, it would be the best thing for the NRL ever. Like it was the only time they're going to get actually decent viewing numbers for their game. It could be it could be the thing for the NRL, the only sport in the whole of the world that got their stuff together and was able to actually um, give people something to watch. Because you would watch synchronized swimming, James McPherson. I, I love sport, but there is nothing. So I'm, I watch pretty much any sport at the moment. Rightio. I'm, I'm doing reruns of the World Surfing Tour at the moment and uh, going back into years previous. That's been, uh, that's been good for me. Um, look, yeah, um, James... i old NBA seasons. Um, so they're reliving all of Michael Jordan, which they never really got to watch. Oh, now. Classic. Absolutely Classic. Well, James McPherson, thank you so much um, for your encouragement and your insight today. It has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for joining uh, Dave's Diary. 
and uh, we will continue to uh, build disciples and uh, change the world. I think this is the greatest days for the church. More people thinking up creative ways to reach and disciple and develop other people than ever before. And uh, just took uh, just took being slightly forced into the um, situation. So, any last wise words of wisdom before we head, James McPherson? Look, I, I think you've summarised it well. The church always flourishes. Um, the church was birthed in tough times. Um, and we have uh, experienced, an un- in the Western world, we've experienced an unprecedented run of prosperity. Right. Now we're entering into difficult times again. But that's when God's people rise. The darker it is, the brighter the light. And uh, so we need to approach this season with great faith and really believe that out of this, um, God is going to really do great things. Um, and at the same time, of course, uh, we all personally are facing challenges, whether it's uh, our employment or um, family issues with the, the changes in we're having, the way we're having to do family and life. And so I just think uh, it's a great time to really press into Jesus. Everything you know about God is theory until it's tested. Right. Everything you know about Jesus is theory until it's tested. And so this is a great opportunity to really um, press into God and prove God's faithfulness in our lives. Love it. Hey, lastly, um, Mm. because it's your boy's birthday today um, and Uber Eats, I'm sure, delivers to your area, uh, what what would be a treat we could send? Uh, Would it be burgers? Would it be pizza? Would it be cold rock? What what would be the thing that they would go, wow, you know what? That's the happy birthday that I was always waiting for. Uh, look, they're, they're both big fans of Betty's Burgers at Castle Hill. Ooh, Betty's Burgers at Castle Hill. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. We, we could send it. How, how many how many people there at the McPherson's? Is there five? Oh, there's, yes, there's are, five. Are you, are you still on that special diet where you can't eat burgers or is that finished now? No, that, that finished some time ago, about... Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> well, please send a happy birthday to the lads and there'll be some Uber Eats coming your way. I don't know when, but we'll get onto it as a happy birthday to those two champion lads of yours. Bless you, mate. Give my love to Beck, your wife, and, uh, and all your boys. Love you guys very much. Will do. Thanks for your time, mate. All right. See ya. Bye. Okay, bye.